Hello everyone, time for another Keep Talking project update and to follow on from the last couple of videos I've made on the design of the bombs uh, modules uh, I've got a couple more modules that I have um, created and printed to show today so to add to Simon and the timer that I'd shown previously first of all I'd like to show uh, keypads uh, here it is, I'm pretty happy with how this one's turned out a couple more changes to make in the future, but the design is pretty much there. Um, so, so happy to kind of put this on hold for the moment um, and, and start looking at other things. Uh, but here we are with four very oversized keys um, on the face, some little windows for the status light to shine through, um, and no symbols for the moment, but rather than printing the symbols into the actual plastic of the keycaps, I thought I'd go down a similar route as you'd see on a keyboard and get some symbols printed out on, on fine stickers. So these will be um, stuck onto um, a bunch of keycaps that I'll print out in bulk, um, and these can be swapped into the module when needed during game setup. Uh, to show you a bit of the journey it took for me to get here, um, I'll go through some of the things that I did along the way. Uh, so what I wanted to use were um, real keyboard keycaps. Um, so here is a very clicky, um, MX Cherry Key Switch. Uh, again, something you'd see on a, a normal keyboard, which is why it's so small. Uh, but the first step was to just find some files on the internet um, that uh, keyboard builders would use to test things out with. Um, so here are um, just some printed um, keycaps, which was important to understand if I could um, print this accurately enough and, and get the right dimensions for the, the interface with the switch uh, but also the switch with whatever it's been held in place by so um, I could use the same dimensions and design on this little piece here that holds key switches um, and then I know exactly what I needed to just uh, hold the key switch in place. So after doing that I can move on to taking that design um, and printing a test piece for um, a key switch to fit into um, that would hold eventually the, the key cap on top. And what I'd start with um, was um, the key cap that I needed in, in the right size um, with a little stalk that interfaces onto the switch, like so. Um, nice and simple, but the only problem is there is a lot of wobble and play on this. Uh, and part of it is because the, the button is so so oversized for um, the size of the switch. So if you imagine someone pressing on the side of the switch, there's a lot of lean and bend and, and twist that, that could go through because obviously the, the switch isn't designed for such a large keycap. Um, and this could be a huge problem when you're looking at um, a design with very little gaps in between because if your key switch goes to the side, it could it could jam under the the edge of the module or jam under the other button um, and that's going to be very frustrating for a player to deal with. So this is why we have um, in the, the silver piece here um, four little holes. This is the route I went down for um, keycap stabilization so the, um, the four little stalks that I've added to the bottom of the button simply go through the holes in this, um, this seat that holds the switch um, and it stops um, a lot of play here. I know there's a little bit of, of wobble still, but it really does stop the, the, the button moving too much side to side uh, and gives it a bit more stability. So you can still press the button in the corners and on the side um, and that button will still press. Um, and essentially I just moved on from there. So you have um, this, this black piece seats all of the, the four key switches. Um, and also holds the, the LEDs. There's no holes here for the LEDs. This is an early test piece. Um, but that sits in this kind of cradle that attaches to the underside of the um, module's face. Um, and then you've got the, the key switch here with the little window for the, the light to show through. And that would just sit on there under the switch and you could press that. Um, the only additional thing I did was to break up the key switch into two pieces. The issue being that if we go back to this one part piece, if you needed uh, 20 to 30 keycaps with different symbols on uh, in your bag, 
to switch in and out um, during game setup. These are quite bulky pieces because um, you know these these rods are making this quite a, a large volume um, and potentially quite fragile as well. They're quite thin, so it's very um, foreseeable that you know if you're throwing these in a bag at the end of the end of the game that these could quite easily break. And um, essentially, I just decided to to split the design so um, you could have a very small thin piece that could be a bit more robust, um, which would be swapped in and out. And then the bottom part of the keycap would just stay in place um, in, the, in the cradle. And um, it wouldn't be moved in and out. It wouldn't be um, uninstalled and removed. And so you'd be avoiding you know, handling it and um, potentially breaking it. So that's what we have here. And if I get the blade out, I should be able to pry under the keycap and reveal how it sits in two pieces. The only other addition that I'll make in the future, I think, is to add a magnet. Um, these are push fit at the moment, so you can just kind of push it in and um, they, they won't fall out. But it, it's likely that if you do that a few times that the plastic's going to start to erode um, and the fit's not going to work quite so well, so the button will start to fall out. So a magnet will just help that, you know, um, live a bit longer um, and, and stop me having to replace the parts and, and print a lot more of these keycaps to, to replace them. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with this. Um, the action's quite nice. Um, a little scratchy on those printed stabilizers, but um, absolutely no problem. The buttons don't bind, they don't jam, um, and a nice clicking sound as well, so you know when you've pressed the buttons, which is exactly what I want for um, usability. So there we have that, and the next module to show is the button. Um, again, really, really happy with how this turned out. Um, I really wasn't sure if I was even going to be able to print the, the cover, which isn't entirely transparent, but you can still see the colour and words through the, the cover, um, which is um, more than I expected. But um, that works quite well. And we've got this um, large button mechanism here. You'll be able to see from the side. Um, the cover stays up so it won't kind of fall on your fingers when you're trying to to, to hold that button and diffuse it. Um, and we've got a, 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 a bit of a, a light box here um, with an LED that can go on the bottom here. And um, a bit of a diffuser printed out of the same plastic as the button cover which works reasonably well. Actually, I can show you that now. If I just push a, an LED in the bottom and use a, use a little coin battery, you can see how well that lights up the box. And you can, you can see the color. It's reasonably evenly lit. Um, and it doesn't quite look it on the camera, but to the eye, it, it's quite a, a nice solid color at the, at the diffuser on the front. But again, um, not much to see here because essentially it's just uh, a hole for an LED and the button mechanism. But um, the, the little journey I went on to get here was from the original wooden version, which I'll show side by side. Um, and this is quite unstable when the, 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 the cover's up. But we have the same button mechanism here with the original um, button on the end of it. <clears throat> and um, how this was intended was obviously you'd unscrew the, the cap um, and replace it with a different colour and a different label for the, the setup before the game. Um, it, it took a lot of looking around to find a button this big um, and this cheap and you could kind of remove. Um, I got a pack of 10 so there were plenty of key caps to spray paint in different colours. Um, and obviously this was way back when I, I didn't have a 3D printer and was trying to find parts um, easily available online that, that did a, a reasonable approximation of what I wanted it to, to do and, and to look like. But I thought I could reuse this, this button mechanism. So if I take this apart, um, this is the button mechanism. Um, and essentially you have um, a little ring here that you could screw on, I've been having a little trouble with the screw on this one, 
but you could screw this ring onto the thread um, and it would essentially pin the button to that to that front plate. Again, can't get the can't get the screw to work. Um, but you'd you'd be essentially pinning the button to the, the front of the box that you were installing this to and then rotating the button on. And I I thought I'd have to do something very similar with, with the button here. Um, but I did discover that the 3D printer is good enough to print threads that would work with the button. So after a bit of trial and error, um, I could design a button that used that same thread um, to, to allow the button to screw on and um, unscrew to be able to change the button for the module, but also to allow the, the actual mechanism to screw into the faceplate as well. Which um, brought its own little challenges. <laughs> as you'll see um, a little bar screwed in beside the button because if this mechanism is screwed in and you are trying to screw the button cap on you could actually end up unscrewing the button mechanism which would have been very bad when your module is uh, fully built and um, ready to play so um, it just needed a little brace to stop this mechanism from rotating round and um, it was good to go um, quite an easy solution um, really the hardest part of this was figuring out the dimensions of the threads for the for the buttons um, and trying to um, design this hinge for the um, the button cover which is made up of a, a few pieces so trying to keep the design of that as close to the game as possible um, which which came together quite well I mean there's no glue or, or screws really holding this in apart from um, the ones keeping the the blue pieces on the front. Um, the rest of these are just um, printed parts that interlock very well with each other um, to the fact that the, the cover doesn't fall down and stays where you put it. So it's um, it's turned out to be a very well um, sized series of parts that, that fit really nicely together. But um, as I said as well, you can unscrew the button, um, which is quite small as well, so that's um, saving a lot of space um, in the spares bag. Uh, and you can screw in another button um, onto here, if I can, with one hand on the rating. And again, one of the hardest parts was trying to align this so the, the thread meant that the words were the right way up when you fully, fully screw this on. But um, yeah, I think that, that works quite well. And um, it's ready to go essentially with with the the, the electronics to be added behind it. Again, um, the modules here are just the face plates. There's there's no box that goes with these yet, but um, that's still on the to do list. Um, but again, it was really nice to do some of the the more aesthetic stuff um, first rather than um, the harder, more serious um, and boring stuff like um, how the module boxes will be kept in the case. But um, I'll just show you all of the different buttons that I have printed. In the meantime, the printer was going on overtime recently, uh, which suited me fine as work's been very challenging. And uh, I haven't had too much headspace to be able to think and, and do much design work here. So um, I could sit back and watch the printer make these amazingly coloured buttons um, which has been a really nice a really nice kind of milestone and, and, and prop to be able to, to look at. Uh, it really feels like this project's starting to come together now. But um, that's all I have for you today. Um, just the two modules, keypads and button. Um, I hope to do a bit more work on the the module boxes and, and the infrastructure between that and the case. Um, I have been printing a couple more pieces that will help me build the, the case, a bit of a jig to, to make sure the parts fit well together, um, but, but that's not as interesting to show. So hopefully the next time um, I'll have a couple of the boxes ready for these modules um, and they'll slide very nicely into the case and stay put, um, which would be um, pretty much us ready to go, um, apart from the electronics in the case. But thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. 
and um, check out the, the Discord link below the video um, if you want to see some of these updates as they come. Um, I, I try to do regular um, photos and comments as I work on these things on the Discord. Um, and uh, maybe you, you have a chance to uh, comment and shape how this looks um, there if you if you have any kind of thoughts um, you can leave them below in the video but um, come join us on the discord uh, and see things happen um, as they happen but yep thank you very much and see you soon